welcome back to my channel and to another video. I hope you are doing fantastic. Today we are going to talk about perfumes that I love but you may not love. That means that those will be the perfumes that are very, very polarizing. So it's like 50-50. 50% of people love them, 50% of, of, of people hate them. Uh, I'm loving these fragrances and I will show you what are they. So if you're interested, please stay tuned and watch the video. Of course, at the begin beginning of the video, I would like you to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, leave a like and let me grow just like that. Okay, let's jump right in then. Uh, so I have a couple of fragrances that are universally hated or liked, as I said. And the first one, I think it's uh, one of the most classic, more, uh, more cla one of the most classic and the most polarizing perfume on earth, I would say. Uh, it's Chanel number no. five. Of course, if I have it in my collection, I love it. I, I like to use it. I do not use it that much now. However, I made quite a dent in it, so it's not that bad. I really like classic Chanel number no. five. However, for many people, it's the smell of the old lady. <laughs> I do not really like this expression because how do old lady smells, you know? It's, it's like very, very strange. For me, uh, this smell is like a clean vintagey soap. So yes, I do uh, I do agree that it is kind of vintage. It is not from our era, you know. However, I think it's very very classy. And uh what is uh, what is where is the, what is the funny thing? This is the perfume that uh, gained me lots and lots of compliments. Uh, I have quite a lot of fragrances. However, I remember Chanel number no. 5 being the most uh, appreciated in my collection. People told me I smell nice. I smell very elegant and classy. And they were kind of surprised when I told them that it is Chanel number no. 5. So, of course, there are people who tried it and really didn't like it. And you cannot do anything about it. If you don't like it, you just don't like it. But I think when you do not know this fragrance, do not do not go first for it. Go for Chanel number no. 5 Law, which is like more approachable, uh, more youthful. Uh, it is basically youth-forwarded scent, but it's still very, very classy, very elegant. Then uh, maybe you want to try Eau Premier. It is lighter, much more muskier for me, uh, but it has a slightly different undertone that I do not like. However, it's only me. You can try and, uh, you know, you can try and tell for yourself and then go to classic number five and I bet it will be easier for you to, uh, you know, to appreciate this fragrance then and you will be accustomed to the DNA of this fragrance because this DNA is, of course, present in Chanel number no. five law and Eau Premier. So that is my opinion. However, of course, if you have tried and if you didn't like it, you cannot anything, you cannot do anything about this, but I really like Chanel number no. five. I think it's classy, I think it's timeless, and it really smells nice on me. I'm not like the old lady smelling girl or anything like that. And uh, those compliments were coming from young people, not the older ones. So it may give you an impression, an idea that is, it is, you know, I think people are, um, I think people have bad ideas about this perfume. Just, just like that. Okay, another fragrance. I do not have it here. I have only a small 10 ml bottle, but I didn't bring it here. Uh, whatever. Uh, Mugler Alien. So basically people also hate DNA of Alien. If you do not like uh, this narcotic and heady jasmine, you will absolutely hate the fragrance. Lots of people suffer with migraines when they are smelling Mugler Alien. However, Alien has been badly reformulated for me. On me now, it is very quickly becoming like a soap. And I do not feel this narcotic jasmine, which I also like, of course. Uh, if I mention about this perfume here, I do love it. Uh, so for me, it's not enough. Uh, I have in my collection Mikalev Glamour, which is very, very similar to Alien, but it's more amped up. So I'm choosing Mikalev over Mugler's Alien. However, still to this day, 
Even after reformulation, Mugler Alien is very, very polarizing scent. And if you do not like the scent profile, you will absolutely hate it and you will end up with migraine or you will not in general feel well when you smell the fragrance. So yes, that's, that's Mugler Alien. I loved it for, from the first time I sniffed it. So I'm in a love, you know, range of people. Another one from Mugler. Uh, I want to talk about uh, EDP. I have EDT for just, you know, to, just to show you. Mugler's Angel, of course. I have ED, EDT, as I said, but I'm especially talking about EDP. Uh, and of course, I would like to mention EDP from the previous years uh, under Thierry Mugler's name, because that was very, very strong perfume. I remember when I had like small, very, very small dabber bottle mm, my father gifted to me. Uh, I was in my primary school back then and I did use it very sparingly, but it was so long lasting. It has a made amazing sillage. I could still smell it when I, you know, when I applied it in the morning, I could still smell it in the evening very prominently. It clings to your skin, to your clothes, to your hair, to everything. So it's a very, very, to this day, after even also after the reformulation, it is very, very polarizing scent. For some people, it smells like dead body, basement, or something like that. Mm, I think patchouli is guilty, uh, guilty with this, you know, uh, with this sensation. I do love earthy patchouli and that's what we get in Angel. In Angel EDT you can also sense this patchouli, you can clearly sense original Angel DNA. I prefer this one because this one is more fruit, it's not fruity, it's more juicy, crisp, more clean. Uh, something bad happened for me with the original EDT Angel, so that's why I don't have it yet. I will retest it and we'll see how that goes. For now it's EDT and I do think it's very very polarizing. Many comments on Fragrantica that this scent is just unbearable. Another one and this one mm, I cannot blame that people do not like as well. I love it because I associate this fragrance with my childhood. Uh, Kenzo, Jungle Lelef uh, Kenzo Jungle Elephant, Lelephon, you know, as you can see, you can say because this is the original name of this fragrance. Who doesn't know Kenzo Jungle? If you hate this fragrance, you know it as well. Uh, so yeah, you should know what you cannot stand, right? Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is my dream come true, you know, because when I was a little kid. Mm, I, I felt this fragrance around me from time to time and I remember thinking that it's very, very beautiful. It is spicy, it is warm and I don't know why, but I thought to myself it's like a coconut smell. But it doesn't have anything to do with coconut. It doesn't even have coconut in its, you know, in its ingredients. So I do not know why did I associate this fragrance with coconut whatever, like child's associations are very, very different and strange sometimes. So this one is very, very spicy, very warm at the same time. For me, it's spicy, creamy, very narcotic as well, very enveloping and very, you know, it's cloying. It, it might be cloying sometimes. So I'm not very, very surprised that people cannot stand it, but I do love this, this fragrance. You cannot go uh, with the heavy hand on the sprayer because you will suffocate yourself and everyone around you. I remember one time, even though I love this fragrance, I remember one time I was going by bus and I was sitting next to the lady uh, that was wearing uh, Kenzo Jungle Elephant, but she was wearing so much that even I couldn't stand it. So I bet she showered herself with it. So it wasn't quite pleasant. I love to smell like strong scents and I love, and I love feel perfume on people, but sometimes uh, it is too much. It has to, you know, like flirt with you. It has to come to you and go for a moment and come again. This flirtatious situation with the perfume is what I love the most because it's the most intriguing. So it cannot be like just in your face. I'm here and I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. This is not that good, you know, to immerse everyone in your fragrance, but when it flirts with you and you catch whiffs, is very, very alluring and it does it really well uh, until you overspray, of course. 
so I really love the scent and I'm very happy to have this bottle in my collection. It's 100 ml actually, so it will last me for a lifetime because like four spritz are maximum for me and four spritz I have used on Christmas day and it lasted me whole day long. So it's very, very good quality still to this day. Kenzo Jungle Elephant. Another one which I absolutely love for me is like the scent of contemplation, relaxation, calmness, meditation uh, and it's Ancre Noir from Lalique. It's a male targeted perfume but I wouldn't you know wouldn't pay attention to that it's just a gibberish. If you like the scent just wear it. For me basically it's a scent of wet forest floor which was slightly burnt and it's, you know, evaporating. It's so, so beautiful. Everyone, you know, perceives the scent differently. Sometimes there are days when it's less aromatic on me and I and it's more like inky. It has like this prominent ink note sometimes, Ancle Noir, like black ink in French. So, so good, very aromatic. More of the time it's aromatic on me with musky undertone, which I absolutely love. And for some people, it smells like a grave. <laughs> I heard this comments that it smells like a grave, like a graveyard, they cannot stand it. It's like wet soil, uh, wet dead body or something like that. I don't know, I do not feel it. For me, it's like a, rem it's like a remedy for the perfume uh, for too sweet perfume, you know, when where, when there was a day when I oversprayed something sweet or or my sweet perfume just made me nauseous, made me tired. After the whole day, I'm taking a shower, I'm spraying Ancre Noir and it's like oh, calming, clean, calming, herbal even. So, so beautiful, slightly, uh, sw slightly sour, very, very here. So, so beautiful. For me, those perfumes don't have any genre. You can wear it, uh, you know, any gender. I mean, I meant to say any gender. So if you're a woman, if you're a man, boy, girl, whoever, you can wear this fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful. So I do not feel anything foul in it. All right, another one. It's uh, two fragrances, basically. Uh, ahead of us that are discontinued, but I will tell you about them because maybe you have them in your collection or you dislike them. So it's either or, uh, it's either or Madonna, truth or dare, and it's like the first Madonna's perfume. As I said, they're discontinued. I don't know why, because it's so beautiful and it made me love white flowers. This is the first perfume that made uh, my love for white flowers start. Basically, it's a gardenia tuberose, which I absolutely love. And here we have this bubblegummy tuberose. Uh, she is sometimes even plasticky here, but I do love this effect. And uh, jasmine. So you have all kinds of white flowers here. You also have vanilla in the base. You have benzoin. It's very, very heady, very narcotic. And again, I have a thing for symmetry <laughs> fragrances, apparently, because here, for example, in Ancre Noir, we have cemetery soil. And this one is described by some people as cemetery flowers, like lilies or something like that, like flowers you bring to the funeral. I do not know. I do not get the sensation. Maybe I didn't attend to the funeral that had this kind of flowers, but you know, I really, really love it. Um, Carnal Flower from Frederick Mal is quite similar. Also, Alexander McQueen EDP is very, very similar. Uh, almost same, I would say. So, so beautiful. And as I said, it, start, it made me love white flowers so much. For now, I do not use it that much because, of course, as I said, it's discontinued. It was dirt cheap, like four years ago, I think. It was very, very cheap in our country. I don't know, maybe it was like $10 or something like that. Of course, I'm telling dollars. We have Zlotics in Poland, but it was very, very cheap. And I do regret not getting more bottles just, you know, to resell maybe or to have a backup. But now I must admit, I'm not that keen of wearing, you know, just only white flowery perfume. I want something more. Of course, I still love white flowers in perfume, but I like 
uh, th I like them in some sort of different company, maybe white flowers and something, white flowers, I don't know, maybe incense or some spices or some germano. So now it's slightly different, but I keep it as a keepsake, you know, and sometimes I do spray it. It is very, very strong, but I'm so accustomed to this fragrance. I'm so used to it that I do not feel it that much. I also have a, a body balm, a shower gel and a roller ball. Uh, with the perfume so I have quite a lot but still after I use everything on me I do not feel it that much because I love white flowers so much that I do not detect it um, as something pungent something potent something strong but it really is so you need to watch out with this but I really really love truth or there another one which is also discontinued and I completely do not get the comments that it is unbearable for some people I really don't get uh, how it can be unbearable, but of course everyone uh, perceives scents differently. So all right, mm, I may I I'm agree I I do agree with that. Uh, Balenciaga Flora Botanica, and this one is a massive crime to be discontinued. You know, it's so so beautiful. Basically, for me, it smells like a wet rose garden in the summer after the rain and thunder. You are laying on the grass. The sun is coming up and the soil is just evaporating. The smell of the grass and the wet roses, like wet, heavy, fragrant roses. This one is so absolutely beautiful. This rose here is dewy. It is green. It is absolutely stunning. It has something creamy about it, but it's like wet, creamy. If you know this fragrance, if you love it, you know what I'm talking about. It's absolutely stunning and I really um, I really do regret not getting bigger bottle because it's a 50 ml and I remember 100 ml being quite cheap before it's you know the news boomed that it is discontinued so I do regret not getting bigger bottle I might I must tell you that when I bought it I used quite a lot and last year I didn't even use it because I'm afraid it will end but you know, I love it. Balenciaga Flora Botanica. Let me know what do you think about this one because it's really, really unique. And I think it should be brought back to life because I didn't find anything similar. Maybe something kind of similar in the vi in the vibe would be Eldo, Etalie Bleu Orange, um, you or someone like you, but that one is like wet, minty, musky, something like this. Not exactly that one, this rosy, dewy garden, but it's quite a vibe, you know, but it's not that similar. So let me know if you know something very, very similar to that, because I haven't found anything. Another perfume that reminds me of my childhood is Eden Casherel. And here also we have like this uh, gummy white flowers, this vicious, pungent even, white flowers from the plastic jungle, as some people say. And this scent is very, very polarizing. Many people just hate, hate the guts of it. Oh, it's so strange what happened here. All right, I will break my bottle. I was uh, dreaming about the bottle of it uh, for so long and and now I have it. I do not use it that often, but still when I smell it, I can see myself as a very little girl in 94. I'm from 90, you know, so I, I was four years old, I remember, four or five years old when I smell it for the first time. It came out in 94, actually. And I remember, um, you know, liking this fragrance so much. I was telling my mother, someone is wearing really nice perfume. And I was a little kid, you know, so bear that in mind. I was crazy back then already about the scents. And oh my God, this one is so unique. For some people, it will be like very old school, unbearable. But for me, is a smell of childhood. It is very, very unique. It is very niche, I would say, uh, and it's a miracle that they did, it, they did that. It is a miracle, yeah, that they didn't discontinue it. That's what I wanted to say. But I think there will come a day when we'll, they will do so. So just uh, buy a bottle, whatever you can. But this one is so, so nice for me. For me, it's a perfect scent for... Uh, summer day when it is raining or or there is after the rain it has the same heavy white flowery quality for me 
that uh, Mugler's Alien has. Of course, those are two completely different fragrances, but it has a similar heavy white flowery quality to it, like almost suffocating, very uh, like, you know, stuffy and hot. So that's, that's the thing I get from it. Eden Cacharel, I really, really love it. Another one, uh, it's a very affordable one mm, as well. I think Eden is affordable as well. This one is quite popular, Zara Red Temptation. However, many people uh, can sense hospital bandages or stuff like that in this fragrance, like dentist office. I can totally agree that I feel sometimes like this notes, <laughs> but for me, it's mainly like burnt sugary, sweet perfume. Sometimes it's also like strawberry leaning, like it would have some strawberries in it. Basically, it's a dupe for Baccarat Rouge 540. So if you feel bandages, dentist office in Baccarat Rouge, you won't like Red Temptation. I even got accused many times that I recommend to scent that smells like a hospital. Come on, people, if you feel as I said, hospital in Baccarat Rouge 540, it is very, very likable that you will feel hospital in it as well. So there are people who feel it, as I said, as a sugary sweet perfume, and there are people who feel it like a dentist's office and, you know, all things that are not that pleasant. So you have to just have to test it on yourself. It might be the case also that you feel it on someone else. It will smell great, but on you, hospital and bandages so you have to test for yourself but a uh, red temptation is very very nice fragrance i really do love it but there are days that i do not quite uh you know i cannot sense it on me i'm turning very blind nose sometimes like most of the time for baccarat rouge esque scent so i'm very very sad about it but all in all it's very very good i really do love it but i know pe some people hate it uh, another one that is very polarizing, I think, uh, but I do love it because it's my, you know, instant mood lifter, Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and this is the OG, OG, like the original version, not any flanker, like the first, first Scandal. For me, it's like a liquor with cherries, with something very, you know, it's very, very sweet honey liquor with cherries, just like that. I love the fact that it has white flowers, it has patchouli, so it's very pungent for some people. It's very screechy, harsh, and in your face, but I love this fragrance for that. It lasts me all day. I love the color of the juice. It's like a truly a liquor, like the liquor, you know, very, very sweet, very tasty, and you drink like one shot and you instantly feel like you are in a good mood, you know? So this one is amazing for me. It's good for bigger occasions when you want to be like in your face, good clubbing scent, although I don't do clubbing anymore. But if you basically want to stand out, even when you are visiting your friends and many people will be there, you can use it. It is amazing. I love it. All right, another one. Uh, another one um, from the realm of old lady scents, uh, Agent Provocateur EDP, like the first fragrance from Agent Provocateur. For me, it's mainly a rose, rose with the leather undertone. For me, it's like a woman in her lace, black lace lingerie. It's very, very sensual for me, very erotic even. So this rose is very, very alluring and very sexy but mature at the same time it is dry rose it is powdery rose but at the same time it has something sometimes dewy in it so it's very like biased perfumes i cannot explain it that well but it's dry for me but at the same time sometimes it's like dewy rose i do not if you get this impression if you have this fragrance but i do get this impression i like it but i know it's slightly polarizing for me it could be even stronger because when I apply it on my skin, I love like the first 10 minutes. It's very prominent. It projects. Uh, it smells really, really nice, especially with this sweet, leathery, rosy note. I love it. But then uh, it disappears very quickly on from my skin. Uh, so it's a bummer because I like the scent so much. Uh, the closest to it, which lasts very long time, uh, is Frederick Mal Portrait of a Lady, but that one is very, very expensive, so I do not know if I will have it in my collection. 
but we'll see. For now, Ajahn Provocateur, I really like the scent. For some people, it's like the old ladish powdery, powdery perfume. So yeah, uh, another two fragrances. Oh, I didn't unpack it. All right, I won't be. Uh, I have two bottles. Zoologist, uh, Moth and Tyrannosaurus Rex. I won't be opening them because I cannot be bothered, obviously. Uh, all right, I'm just joking, but you know, I'll just leave it uh, as it is. Moth is this rosy fragrance as well. For me, it's like the uh, haunted house scent, uh, you know, very, very beautiful, uh, very um, mysterious, very dark rose with, uh, with spices, with uh, what, do we, what do we have here? Cinnamon, clove, cumin, lemon, nutmeg, saffron. Yes, yeah, so you have all the vast array of spices in here. Very polarizing, but if you love it, you love it. And T-Rex, of course, it's a burnt wood, but with this, um, you know, elegant vintage colony even undertone. Like this T-Rex is very elegant, he's very entrenched. And that's what's the smell, you know? It's like the beast with the gentle heart for me. All right. And uh, the last fragrance I really, really love, but I know many people doesn't, Stash from Sarah Jessica Parker. I know that people hate it, especially for um, the dill note that is prominent for some people. Fortunately, I do not feel it in this perfume. For me, it is basically like a creamy, woody, warm fragrance. That is, that's what it is for me. I really love the scent. I have 100 ml backup bottles and two roll-ons, you know. I absolutely love it. They discontinued it because the Masoya, because of the Masoya wood that gives you this creamy effect, wood, creamy woody effect. So it's, it's like craziness with uh, discontinuing the fragrances. I absolutely love Stash. It is for some people as also like Grandpa Cologne or something like that. For me, nothing of the sort. It is absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. It is a niche quality with very affordable price. If you have it in your country and it's still in the decent price, just get it. Just don't ask, just don't, you know, don't turn around, just get it. I would love to have an oil as well just to make the fragrance more prominent, more long lasting, but it's absolutely stunning. So if you can just get it until it's not gone completely. All right. Thank you very much for watching today. Let me know what are your fragrances that you love, but people usually hate. And let me know if you like any of those fragrances I showed you, or if you don't like any thing I showed you as well. Thank you very much for watching today and see you in my next videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>